We got the killers over here. Yeah! We got the killers over here. Yeah! What's up, what's up, what's up? This your boy, Coach D.O.C. with my co-host, Coach Poe. Trip is reloaded. Today we got a special guest, a living legend, um, known, known to many as Coach KJ, known to me as Prime Time, Kendrick Jones. <laughs> Welcome to the spot, man. How you doing, man? Right Pleasure on, to right have on. you. Right on. Appreciate you. Appreciate All right, you. Um, I know you two guys know each other very well today, man. We're going to start off uh, with the state of Youth sports and high school sports. How difficult is it to find quality coaches? Yeah, it's probably the most critical part of uh, you know player development and really having it going as far as um, uh, having a good run. You know. College college coaches, you know, it's, it, it could be the same way. And it trickles down to high school. And then it trickles down to uh, the Little League where quality coaches are just not easy to find at all, bro. So don't just get stuck on uh, the, the Little League level. Don't get stuck on the high school level. None, it's quality coaches all the way around who know the game, can relate to players. Uh, there's a there's a social emotional aspect to it. Yeah. There's a, a knowledge of the game aspect to it, and to find somebody who kind of embodies all that, it, you can only find about one or two per team possibly when you get to the upper levels. You know what I mean? And that's in high school and college. So little league is just a, a far far drop off and stuff where you might have just one coach possibly. You yeah. know, you can't. You just need other people to facilitate. Yeah. You know, certain certain things and positions. Yeah. A lot of times at the little league um, division, you tend to get one person who has the knowledge, and other person who has the social economic aspect of the game or whatnot. How do, how do you feel that the two are intertwined, or how how difficult is it to find these people? Yeah, you like like you saying what I'm saying, pretty much. You you definitely have this one person who, well, what we refer to in around you know around the sport in the industry who gets it. Yeah. You know what I mean. Uh, you you get that one person who gets it, and that's the roll of the dice on the on the little league level because even a head guy might not get it. Right. Yeah. So uh, you have uh, a bunch of different people who are really trying to gel together from different perspectives and things like that on a little league level. One person might do this, one person might do this, another person might do that, and then you bring it all together to have a halfway decent team. Yeah. You know, it's easy to get away with that on the little league level. It's, it's, it's less easier to get away with that on a high school level, and it's even tougher to get away with that on a college level, and so on and so on. You know, like, like quality really drives a team's success from the coach's standpoint. You know what I mean? It, it really goes a very, very long way. It's underrated. Talent only can take you so far. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's say talent only take you so far. All right. Speaking of talent, uh, I met both of these guys in 1994. You know what I mean? Uh, we supposed to have us a little league dynasty built at that time. Uh, Kendrick, I knew him through baseball. He was new to football. It's like his first year playing. Uh, we was in Matthew Dickey East. What what happened, man? We 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 never got to be teammates. Could you kind of tell me what happened in that aspect? Yeah, uh, you know when I look back, so I really was green to the scene. You did so for me. Uh, when I look back, I can only speculate what could have possibly been going on back then. But for me. How it was given to me was that Matthew Dickey East was uh, just starting up. Yeah. So uh, it was this uh, opportunity for East St. Louis to really have a team, which we really hadn't had. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it was exciting because I didn't have to go to uh, I didn't have to go to Caseyville and play for the Raiders or Collinsville and play for the Raiders. Yeah. 
or Belleville to play for the Devils or the Knights. And uh, to be quite honest, I, I really knew nothing about the little Comanches yeah. who I eventually played for the following year in like 95. All right. Because in 94, Matthew Dickey East just didn't quite work out for me at all. I don't even know who it worked for. It didn't work for anybody. It, 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 <laughs> they took yeah. the money and ran it. Okay, yeah, I know, I know they ended up dividing the teams crazy. Me and Doc, you know, we was on the team together initially, man, and uh, uh, it's something, something happened with that team where we was out there at Jackie Robinson yeah. practicing, and, you know, we was out there a team full of ballers. Like, team full of balls, hey, man. It, 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 almost Steve. everybody from that team to this day has credentials. Yeah. I'm talking from high school to college. The people that we had that was in those spots had Stars, you had myself, you had Terrence Poe, Julian Crockett, um, you had Tony O'Greer, uh -huh. Kent Jones, um, Hershey Hollinsworth. I think. Uh, I think Tristan was quarterback. Tr Tristan Hill was Tristan, out there. Tristan was quarterback. Darius Smith, Demarius Ball. Yeah, he was quarterback as well. Yeah, man, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. we were loaded, man. Yeah. So, so just to um, just to have some hindsight, you know what I'm saying? They call East St. Louis the city of champions for a reason, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and like I, I like to extend it a little bit. I like to call it the six one great because man, we have so many people with the roots of um, East St. Louis. All throughout the six one eight area, like nobody's just stuck to East St. Louis anymore. So, you know what I mean? Six um six one great, man, we we producing a lot of talent and you know what I mean I think the world's starting to take notice. So nineteen ninety four we didn't get to play with each other. Um you didn't play at all. I don't think Pope played at all that year. I'm the only one played and that's because I was doing some stuff I had no business doing. I was still playing at Clark. I was playing at Clark, that was my first year there. And then I also played for Matthew Dickey East, which I ended up playing with the 13-year-olds. Oh. And, man, we was at a disadvantage. They yeah. caught, they had light and heavy division. Yeah. And uh, we caught ourselves light, and we were playing unlimited. Okay. So we, we was at a total disadvantage, getting smashed. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm the biggest person on the team, 144 yeah. pounds. And right. we're, going, we're going against the Giants of, of St. Louis, and they okay. smashing us week in, week out. Okay, yeah, that was uh, like that was back in the time where I know me personally. I know I was uh, I was always playing with older people. Yeah, because you know if you really think about uh, if you really think about it, it to me, it just was just what you did. You know what I mean? You just you always kind of felt like the people who were your age really wasn't they weren't good enough. They weren't good enough, they weren't you know good enough at all. That they, they weren't good enough, and that was that was instilled in me from baseball because you know I was heavy on baseball, heavy yeah. on baseball. So uh, you know, for me, uh, Tristan played on my little league baseball team with the East St. Louis Bulls. Okay, uh, we used to run through people, man. I already know. Um, yeah, we used to run through people. I sucked in baseball. I tried. <laughs> But yeah, that was that was my that's my first love. Yeah. My my baseball was my first love, man. I was a baseball player who turned to football. You I know what I mean? Hit the face with the ball and I quit. You you got hit in the face with the ball and quit? Yeah. Oh man, first base like this. I got hit in the Bam. face. I got oh. hit in the face with the ball. I just you know. Nah, I was good. Kept it going. Man. I couldn't hit nobody back, so I'm straight. Oh, for man. for me, I saw people like him get hit in the face with the ball, and I don't play no more. <laughs> <laughs> but and it's funny because that Bulls team you were on. It's almost like we swapped out. Uh, we was the Cardinals when I played for that team. We was okay. the Cardinals, and you know I mean, I played a little third base in outfield, and that's where my nickname Doc came from. Baseball, I was on that same oh, team, man. Yeah. So we little Mac, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so all little, those guys. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Little Mac was, uh, you know, his dad was my coach. Okay. Uh, Big Mac, you know, Big Mac was my coach, and Robert Mosby yeah. was my coach. Uh -huh. uh, they took over. The Bulls because uh, Ronnie Boyd, who was initially the Bulls coach and the founder of the Bulls, um, he he just passed it along. He he had whatever he had going where on. was going on in life and stuff. He just passed it on, and he didn't want to pass it to know anybody. And Malcolm Henderson, Big Mac, and Robert Mosby, Coach Mosby, was uh, two real real good players. Who really, I'm talking about who really really showed me, you know what I mean, the ethic. That really goes along with the game of baseball because I already, you know, I was already getting the game for my pops. Yeah. 
but uh, it was the ethic, the work ethic, and the team, and all that, how to put all that together, and the expectations of the sport, and all that. You know, that really came from. Uh, I give credit to uh, to Robert Mosby and Malcolm Henderson for sure. Yeah. You know, that's uh, you know, that's that's that was where my winning really, really kicked off in life. Yeah, man. So so speak, speaking of that, just knowing that, you know what I'm saying, when you around winners, you you become a winner. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What what type of values and things did you learn from those guys? Man, that um for one, you just you just didn't have no mercy on whoever it was. Say, it kid, was, it kid was like, with a sledgehammer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real real talk. Um, you know, we would uh we would just run teams into the ground. And, you know, now it was so important, you know, back then to really do that because it makes it uncomfortable for anything to be close. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's really what it did was just like any time things was close, you just remember that feeling. You kind of encapsulate that feeling and never want to feel that way again, even if you won. You know what I mean? Because it was like it was too close. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it really made you want to put things away early. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, so you didn't have that same fulfillment that you have when you know because of your preparation, you went out there yeah. and executing and and yeah. just demoralized the team yeah. versus man having a close game and knowing man yeah. they shouldn't even been in the game. Yeah, it was only it was only maybe like it was only maybe like two teams. It was only maybe like two teams in the whole region for real that was really you know giving us a go yeah, okay. in the region. You know what I mean? Because we would touch, we would touch, you know, of course, Missouri, we would touch Tennessee. You know what I mean? We was really, you know, a team that was about that business, man. Yeah. All black. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? saying? All black. And going they, around killing, and killing they, these guys. They, they weren't used to that, man. Nah, they weren't used to that, man. Robert Mosby, then? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was my, that was my little league coach, man, uh, for a good little deal, man. Hey. And, uh, and, and Bobby was throwing that heat back then, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. He was playing a high, he was playing a high corner, man, third base and pitching. Throwing, you know, that, throwing he, that heat. That's what he did. Batting, uh, batting, it depends, third or fourth, depending on uh, where he wanted Tristan Hill in the lineup. Yeah. You know what I mean? Tristan sometimes is better off at the uh, the third slot than he was the fourth slot. We toggle with that. Okay. You know, off and on at times and stuff. But when it ultimately settled in, Bobby was a cleanup man. Man, so um, with that Little League Baseball, how how close are you with some of those guys today? Man, Jared Wells, Shea Bowman, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, we still just like, we like brothers, even if we don't talk for a year or two, we just like brothers, man. You know, it's just. Uh, just Bobby Mosby, you know, we, we communicate how we communicate. Uh, even, even you know, at this adult age, how me and Jerry, we still have a, a communication where we just, we connect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shea, me and Shay, we, you know, we was we was like that. We we still like brothers, you know what I mean, I, from, I, a, from a distance. Y'all was two of the flashiest y- young players that I ever met. Yeah. Boys flashy. They took that fashion stuff seriously, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, we, uh, we but was they was ballers, that. though, so it, it was yeah. easy to, you know what I mean, let them do what they do with their fashion. Because a lot of coaches will make you take some of that stuff off yeah. if you ain't producing on that type of level. Prime so time yeah. was definitely drippy. Yeah. And, and brown. And Brown, and Brown, yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. And Beasy. Yeah, I, man, and Beasy out there coaching Little League ball, too, man. He's trying to get his name out there for us to coach an yeah, aspect. I heard he son. Yeah, he got, got a son. son. Yeah, I think he got a son, so he's coaching his son team, man. Uh, for those of you who don't know, man, this is Ill Sports 24-7. Go to YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, help us get better at what we're doing. Talk about um, ain't, no, ain't no big deal, you know what I mean? We, we take all criticism, constructive or not. And, uh, you know what I mean? We're trying to be better. So, go on, like the page. Let me know something about myself and my co-host. And uh, let me know what guests you want to come in. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Kendrick Jones, he's um, a East St. Louis native. Uh, he was with, actually with Darren Sunkett's first first class at um, at Eastside High. First playoff team. Um, first Division I um, athlete to go out of school, right? True. All right, tell yeah. us a little bit how that um, recruiting process went before Coach Sunkey got to East Side. Uh, were, were you getting some looks, or how was things going? Well, uh, 
I was I was under recruited uh, because uh, for one the, uh, the the style of play that we were uh, we were doing at East St. Louis High School prior to Coach Sump it just wasn't um, tragic. It wasn't conducive for a uh, a wide receiver. You know okay. what I mean. Okay, so you're in the Nebraska offense. Yeah, back in the day, back in the say, day, Nebraska. I won't fullback, say fullback, fullback. I won't say Nebraska. I won't say that because uh, you know, for the most part, you really had uh, Elvisville who covered the Nebraska style. Okay, play. okay, you know they did I mean? it pretty well. Yeah, 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 yeah no yeah. doubt. Yeah. So uh, I will say uh, for for me. Uh, uh, what was he saying? The uh, recruiting process. The, yeah, for me, the recruiting process really started for me, Mizzou. When we went to the Mizzou camp, our sophomore year, sophomore. going into our junior year. So that sophomore, our sophomore year, going to our junior year, that uh, that that, that that summer. Okay. That yeah. summer. That summer, we had uh went to that camp. I think uh. Corby Jones, yeah. Corby Jones, yeah. yeah, okay, okay. Corby Jones uh, was still there and everything yeah. like that. Justice they was Smith. running that, you know how they was running that uh, option yeah. with Corby, and so they was really a uh, run team back then. So I actually came out the number one receiver as a sophomore or whatnot that year. Okay, but you know back then they couldn't offer you until you was done with your junior year. Yeah, so yeah. I was. That's things what, things change uh, tremendously. Yeah. And, and I think it's for the it's for the better now, man. I think a lot of a lot of um, kids back then, they they would only care about their junior and senior year. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Now I think um, it's a little bit more focus and a little bit more possibilities for younger guys to get on the field, knowing that um, a guy that you just was getting ready to coach, like Jalen McKenzie, yeah. already um, got offers coming out of eighth grade. Yeah, yeah so it's, um, it's very much so. Just you know, internet. Yeah, internet changed the game. Internet friendly for sure. Internet changed the game, for man. Sure. I think I think YouTube start to start to break in in two thousand and six. It was being like ushered in. Okay. Two thousand and six. So you know what's happening in two thousand six for us? We you know starting professional careers in yeah. two thousand six. So we missed our wave of promoting ourselves and all that stuff because uh, it was it was for the next generation to yeah. take advantage of coming up. Now they got Twitter and everything. So, you know, they got the Twitter and the YouTube and stuff like that, which just went to another level in this day and age, man. But it just it just goes back when they offer when uh when I was getting recruited and stuff, uh it was the Illinois camp that we went to going into our senior, senior year. Yeah. When Sunk when came Sunk, Sunk got there, he had got there like in April of two thousand. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it was at the tail really end of my uh, junior year. Man, so I remember that. Yeah. So, so you did get to get the summer with something then. Yeah. And um, how how different was, how different was that summer compared to the previous? Crucial. It was that that was that summer. First of all, we can't skip over the spring when he first got there. Uh, when he first got there in the spring, he wanted to get to work right away. We had never done that. No. Okay. We only went in the summertime right before, like, training camp and that stuff. Like, yeah. so we, we really was getting started in August, you know. And even I know if you want to, you know, be good at something, you're going to have to do it all the time. Yeah. And baseball, for me, was all year round. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was not a moment that I wouldn't do something that had to do with baseball. Right. Okay. Because that was the expectation of uh, the preparation that we needed to do, just the level of dedication that we had and stuff like that. So when Sunk came, I knew he was I knew he was going to be productive when I saw his work ethic. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So he kicked that back to me for the first time on the football side of sports for yeah. me because I had never seen that in football. So he really taught me how to work at the game. You know what I mean? So... Going into college, I had an idea, a better idea, and I was more prepared for that one little short year or whatever, not even a full year with them or whatnot. You know, it, it really did me a service, you know what I mean, because prior to that, I really wasn't getting the game 
like I wanted to. All right, so for for some of my young listeners, man, I know y'all probably can't process what he's saying. What he's saying basically is the celebration is in the preparation. You know what I mean? The, you can't you ain't gonna celebrate at the end if you ain't preparing right. You know what I mean? Some people are gifted, and you know what I'm saying we can't do nothing about that. They were born that way. But a lot of us, man, it's hours and hours of preparation that you had to put into being able to be the team celebrating at the end. Uh, shout out to Coach Sunk, man. Uh, go my, you know what I'm saying? But with, with Sunk, also, I think, and I'm on the outside looking in, I believe um, Damian Nash ended up transferring, transferring in mm-hmm. your senior year. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was one of the most highly touted guys of our, of our generation. Yeah. And yeah. shoot, I, I think him coming to this side of the world even helped me in a sense, yeah. being, being at Cahokia. Yeah, that's, that's a fact. That's a fact. I mean, if you if you really I'm if you really a person who yeah if you really a person who um understands how uh, understands how this I, I call it the industry how the industry works you know, in the industry of high school football and uh, you know we can take it as far as just football in general but right now we're gonna stick to high school since that's what we're talking about the 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 idea of East St Louis uh, playing any team. Is a great idea, yeah, because of the tradition. But the presentation that East St. Louis brings to the table when you play them, it, it it can raise your validity of a player as an opponent. Right. So as as an opponent, the better we play, the better you look. The better you look. Yeah. No as doubt. an opponent, no you know doubt. what I mean. So to be quite honest, you know we was just getting started. Yeah, and I feel I feel like my high school experience. I feel like we got robbed definitely. when it comes to the game of football. Most definitely, I say it all the time. No knock against no knock against uh, Coach Hill, Terry Hill, who had our three, who had, who had our three years. Well, me three years because you know you know I came out of A M Jackson, so yeah. I was in I into high school as a freshman. Yeah, yeah, and you was with that. Um, it was only a select few of you guys Jackson who were able folk. to do it. Yeah, Jackson folks. It was only a select a- few. Yeah, A M Jackson kids was the only kids allowed to enter into high school as freshmen because back then high school started as a tenth grade, tenth grade, yeah. as a tenth grade school. So you know, I was. The only freshman on the team, for real, at one point, Darren Booker was another one who ended up transferring to uh, yeah, West. West. So I think I might have been the only freshman on the team at some point, actually. Yeah. He yeah. Left, he left after y'all freshman year. He sure he didn't leave during the season? No, he left. He left. Right up. He left sophomore year. Okay. In the middle, he, but, he left in the middle of the season sophomore year. So okay, cool. So yeah, so you know, I was it was me and him was the only freshmen on the team. Uh, I'm not sure how he squeezed in as a freshman, though. To be honest, <laughs> I don't, cause he wasn't an Aaron Jackson, was it? So I'm not even sure how that how that happened. Uh, you know, maybe he knows somebody. You know, uh, you know how maybe, you know how it is, man. Yeah, maybe you know somebody. You know, I ain't mad at him. None of that. You know, that was my dog. That's you know, that's still my guy, man. I reach out from time to time. You know, all that. That's cool, know. man. Y'all know I always have a little um, funny story, man. Or I, I could take it back when I when I bring some of these guests in. So. Um, I, I transferred out of East St. Louis School District 189. Which you should have never did. I mean, hey. Oh. hey things, which you should have never did. Things happen, man. I think I opened some doors for some other people, man. I, I, yeah, it was yeah. God's plan, man. It, was, it, was, I, it, it definitely would have been fun to be a, yeah, part of, yeah. a part of Showtime, Primetime. All that. Ooh, I don't even know what they called me for that. He would have been a quarterback. Hey, man. It's, it's been nasty. But... You know what I'm saying? We can't we can't relive that. But yeah, yeah. East that's, St. Nah, Louis. That's what we're doing now. We can't okay, relive okay. that. That's hey, what so, we're doing so now. So at this time though, you know, I, I transferred to Cahokia. And unlike East St. Louis, Cahokia starts in the ninth grade. Right. So I ain't get to play I ain't get to play with you, but that summer we enter in freshman year. Um, the only seven on seven tournament that was popping was Prairie State around this area. Oh yeah, yeah. Prairie yeah. State games. You yeah, yeah. you got Cahokia and East Side. That's true. We 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 battling it out in a seven on seven. I forgot. And about that. Uh, I think this fool catches the game winning TD, man. Seven on seven. We up we up like six points. I don't know how. We, I think we missed an extra point or something. He catches the game winning TD on my boy T O. 
<laughs> we had the young guns in there, and it, it was it was it was great, great ball, great coverage, better catch. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I like, man, all us supposed to be on the same team. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But um, you know what I'm saying I like to share some of those stories, man, to let people know that you know what I mean. Competition breed breeds breeds it all, man. Like yeah. we we compete against each other from afar. But we also mm-hmm. celebrate each other. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you best believe, oh, oh, Kendrick, he ran what? Ah, let me try to run that. I need to, I need to top yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's true. The Illinois camera was when Prime Time was born. That, uh, sure. that, that's when he came out. Well, yeah, the uh, he had the nickname before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. when it was. Yeah, because the nickname came from my pops. Yeah, that's where the nickname came from. Okay, the nickname came from my pops. My dad started calling me Prime Time, that's and other people started hearing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they started, you know, Illinois, calling Illinois. me that. That went up in Illinois. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, so <laughs> going into, you know, our senior year that summer, we went to the Illinois camp. You know, yeah. that's when my life changed right there. Right. My life changed right there. And it, because people, what people don't realize is that Kendra Jones is a baseball player. Yeah. Turn football. Yeah. So for me... I felt like for a long time, even into college, that I just didn't know the game as much as everybody else. Yeah. I mean, and, and you and you wouldn't because, um, you know what I'm saying, coming up where we come from, East St. Louis, those 89 blocks, that's what you started with, baseball. You even had, you even had softball teams at the elementary schools, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, to reiterate what you're learning in Corey League. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying, that was the, that was the focus almost in a sense. I, it, it was appalling to me to see that baseball wasn't successful around in this area, man, for yeah, they, for the black schools. Yeah, they shut, they shut Jackie Robinson down. That really did a number to the city when it comes to uh, when it comes to the productivity of uh, baseball in the city, man. It just really did a number, man. Like after after our class was really the last class that that really you know really put some. Um, Meaningful time into really being good at the game for real. Yeah, uh, it just it just wasn't the same. After man, while we know. talking about baseball, man, I want to uh, give a shout out to my producer, man, Young Drew, uh, from Beatboxer uh, Production. He's a baseball coach that um, inherited my football team. He um, kind of been teaching those guys the game of baseball. This year was supposed to be year three, and he was excited for year three because year one we finished about five hundred, but year okay. two. We was like 20, 22 and two with a championship on our belt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, so I know he was excited, man. We take that same group. We went from football to basketball to baseball, and you know what I mean. Some of those guys are venturing off doing other things. You got guys bowling, doing tennis, so, or, yeah, yeah. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, with your youth baseball years, the success that you had doing that stuff, mm-hmm. man. These guys, man, they honor students. They doing it all, like. Yeah. They just competitive all around the yeah, board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. That be crucial though, man. Just to get out and just compete in something. Don't just do it. Be be the best at whatever it is that you're doing. Don't just be a part of it. You know what I mean? You know, take over. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that mentality goes a long way in just life in general. And uh, sometimes you know we in we in the we in the era of the participation trophies and stuff. Yes, we are. Yeah. So you know it is what it is though you 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 evolve because you don't want to dissolve. Yeah, you feel me? So you just you understand what it is, but a mentality is a mentality. No matter if you're in 2000 or 2020, yeah. you know what I mean. If you hold a certain mentality, then none of that stuff really affects you because only the strong survive. No matter where you at, yeah, time period and all, you know that that mentality is timeless. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta have a. Uh, you gotta have something that you really expressing that that desire to just beat up on your opponent. Yeah, you know what I mean. To kind of you know beat up on your chest when you do it a little bit. You know what I mean. Yeah. So you can just experience that because uh, whatever you did to get there is what really you can hold on to the rest of your life and be valuable in whatever you got going on, corporate America. Uh, college, even if you're not an athlete in college, is attacking your schoolwork, being better, you know, being better than yourself is always is always a job that's worth taking. Man, something I like to tell people, man, and like you said, it don't, it don't matter if you're a professional in, in, in whatever field. It could be a sport, doctor, lawyer, um, regular job, Walmart, I don't care. 
know what I'm saying? Bigger the sacrifice, bigger the reward, man. If if you want if you want to accomplish some things, there's a lot of stuff that you got to give up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and and time, how you use your time is the main thing. Man, versus, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That separates the people who are successful versus the ones who are not. How you use that time, man? It's easy to use a college student, man. It's easy to walk past the people. And you like, dang, man, they chilling today. The weather good. The regulars, as we call yeah, them. Yeah, you know what I mean? We used, to, we used to walk around there doing what we had to do and all that, man. And we used to just talk to each other like, man, I wish I was a regular right now. Man, just, just, it just, just today. So fun to be a just, regular hey, just student, today. Man. <laughs> sun, like, man, hey, the sun so cool, out, man. Like, they on the quad and you all, you, you, you hustling and bustling trying to get to that oh, two o'clock workout oh, or bro, meetings bro. or film or whatever you got going on. <laughs> all right, so. What what I want to know, prime time was born and bred by your father. Yeah. But the world was put on notice to prime time at, at Illinois. What what's some some of the things that happened there? So, I guess I should go back to how it happened for me going into Illinois. So that summer we went to the camp, and um, it was like a two it was like a two day two day camp yeah. or something like that. It was like a two day camp. It was Friday Saturday. It was a uh, it was full go for full for the goal. linemen. Yeah. yeah, I got linemen at the camp too. Yeah. <laughs> it was fast. Porilla. It was full go, whatever. So you know we did a whole lot of seven on seven. Yeah. So I think we started at eight thirty. That's when Murph became D one. Yeah. We started at eight thirty and um, speaking of Murph, they, though, speaking of, yeah, Murph, yeah. Murph was out there with us too. Was he? Yeah, man. I'm telling you, when, yeah, when yeah. I tell you, man, we we yeah. had we had the the making of uh, you know what I'm Bring saying a, a, a dynasty. Yeah, we, we had did. the making of a dynasty we out did. there. We did. But all right, so, so boom. Yeah, so we went uh when we went to that camp, and I think uh in the summer we started at like eight thirty. Shit, my my eleven thirty, they offered me. They okay. offered they off of me. Coach Turner drove up on the car, was looking at everything that I was doing for was two, two for two hours. And the first hour they, they heard about me. Yeah. The second hour they had to see about me. Yeah. And then they and by the third or fourth hour they were sure about me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they they went on here and offered me and Didi. Yeah. At the same time, man. And um Rest in peace, D Nash. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Whole lot of that. Yeah, but uh he uh off of both of us, and um, you know we 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 accepted the offer together. You know we we kind of shook on it. Was like, hey, let's, let's do this. You know, what's, you know, what's, yeah. I'm like, yeah. It was a good it was a good deal for me because Illinois had came off. I think the Micron PC Bowl. Yeah. And uh, they they I think they beat Virginia. I, I want to say they beat Virginia like sixty something to to some oh, they got twenty they, something. They got in their grip. If I'm so, not mistaken. Hey, Coach Sunk had some players on that team too. Yeah, Christian Christian Ward, uh, Jamal, Jamal Clark. Jamal Clark. Um, Jamal Clark what, was it somebody Moore. else? It was only two of them. I, I, I think it was just them two. I feel like it was somebody else there, man. No, nah, it was them two. Right, it was them two for uh, for for that. It was them two. Okay. Yeah, it was them two. So you know. Uh, yeah, it was one of those things where I took that into consideration as well. Christian being there and then uh, Jamal JC, Jamal Clark being there. You know, all of us knew each other because of the situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when he uh, when they offered me, they you know, of course, it was just like, for me, it was a cool situation because, you know, Coach Turner is a, is a great offensive mind. Yeah. Offensive mind for sure. You know what I mean? Uh, as a head coach, he might not have been as productive as he as he. You know, man. expected to be and all that stuff, but he had some moments to where he was successful. Yeah, you know what I mean. But consistency is everything. So you know, if you ain't that, they let you go. I know, you know how it mean? is. But offensively, man, he could he could go offensively with the best of them. Yeah, you know, on that level for sure. And that's why he got his. That's why he got a. Uh, that's why he got his position with the uh, with the Bears and all that stuff when they went to the Super Bowl, I believe, under yeah. Lovey Smith. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was definitely noticeable that um, he was an offensive. Um, yeah, he ran a pro offensive style. guru. Yeah, you know he what ran saying? a pro style offense, man. So you know, I got I, I was running a pro style offense that first four years. You know what I mean? So that 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 to me was such a intricate part of who I am as an athlete to this day. Yeah. Uh, former athlete or whatever to this day because the, the, the things that he was implementing to the system and all that, it was it it, it was uh conceptually fluid. 
Okay. The concepts were very fluid, and, and it was like, okay, if you understood this, if you understood one thing, you know what will possibly come around. Come around that. from it, yeah. You know what I mean? All right. So, all right, Illinois, you know what I mean? They, you get the Turner, great offensive mind. Yeah. And yeah. He you know offered me. He offered me. We got. We started the camp probably about 8.30, man, and he offered me a scholarship probably by 11.30, 12 o'clock for sure. Okay. You know what I mean? On a two day camp. So we first weren't even day. done with, yeah, first we, day. Yeah, we first weren't day. even done with the first day. And he offered me he offered me a scholarship by the by the middle of the first day. Yeah, Shit. Right. And when, once once you got that offer, did you turn up or did you chill out? Nah, I, I I because it was so much good competition there, man, that it was just I could tell you it was Robert Jackson, rest in peace, who was my wide receiver coach in Illinois. He just recently passed within the last year or so. But anyway, um, he was following me wherever I went yeah, okay. at the time. And he wouldn't necessarily just, like, stay. But he would pop in for, like, five minutes and make sure I was doing what I was supposed to be doing yeah. and not making, you know, Illinois look bad for the decisions they just made. So I, I had felt like I had more pressure on me to be good yeah. than when I wasn't offered. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it was just as important to go even harder. You know what I mean? Because it was people there who was jealous yeah. of that, that of offer. You know, he, he sit there and offered you. So now everybody talking about the dude that they offer. And it was a lot of dudes there that thought they should have been offered. Yeah. Who, to the game of football at the time in high school, had names. Yeah. So and her, her, you are unnamed. Who I, here I am, unnamed. It was you know, I ain't I ain't walking around with no with no coat on in the summertime. They got state patches on and all this stuff. How they be doing and all yeah. that stuff. We went none of that. You know what I'm saying? So who am I to me to the game of football? I ain't nobody yeah. because baseball was my thing. So I'm still a guy who's learning. But you know, I knew that I had talent, and I knew that if you put anybody in front of me, I was gonna compete with them. And and you know, more than likely, if you give me enough shots. It was gonna favor me. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I was always confident like that in that sense, but I was always confident that I wasn't good enough. Okay. I wasn't always confident, you know. So it, that. so it made you it made you hungry. It made, it made you want to work. Yeah, man. man. It made me it made me hungry. It made me want to work. It just made me want to figure out how much better could I be if people praising me for doing this. Then what you know? So it was like one thing. I got off of the scholarship. Now I was like, okay, well I got one scholarship offer, so at least I got a scholarship offer. Yeah. But it ain't Florida State or Notre Dame like I wanted. Yeah. And why? I speaking of Florida State, me knowing you. Yeah. Why? Why you wanted to go to Florida State, man? Dion. Prime time. Dion Sanders, man, he made it look real nice. And Notre Dame just always had a history that was so thick that if you watch college football. You knew they was about their business. Yeah, hey, that, that tradition in South Bend, man. It's, it's something heavy, else, man. It's heavy. It's heavy, man. It's the, the, the football tradition at Notre Dame is almost more heavy than the Catholic religion out there. <laughs> I, um, I'm, you know trying, I'm trying to think. Did you have a relative that went to Notre Dame or something? Yeah, Lafonso Ellis. Yeah, I, th I thought you were some kids. Lafonso Ellis. That's big cuz, man. Shout, hey, out, shout, out, shout, out, Fonzo, shout man. out to Lafonso, man. Oh, you, up, hey, you're a living legend, boy. Yeah, that's come that's on, Come on back this way so I can get you on the couch, man. Yeah, so Need to talk yeah. to you. You got a story. Yeah. Couple state championships and everything. I need to talk to you, big fines. Yeah, man. Yeah, that was actually a decision when I, uh, when I, when, when it came time. I actually Notre Dame actually recruited me, started recruiting me late. Okay. So they actually called me and they offered me and stuff like that. Talk talk about the uh, <laughs> recruiting process. Uh, you know, it's like the recruiting process is like a sandwich, man. If somebody get a sandwich, everybody want one. So somebody offer you, how the rest of the recruiting take off for you? Yeah, man. If, if 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 your mama one day sends you to school, make a make you a potato sandwich or something. Yeah. Ain't nobody really never heard of a potato sandwich or something. And then you eating on it, you make it seem good. The next person like you know, man, you made that look good, man. Let me let me try that. You know yeah. what I mean? That's kind of how it went for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because nobody knew who I was. Uh, Illinois, you know, with that offer, you know, kind of opened up doors for people to understand and like. Uh, Maybe I need to try and uh, compete with Illinois and getting this guy. So uh, with me committing, committing, I actually committed 
Okay. Verbally early, you know, so I was really, you know, on on to uh, the Illinois train early right. on. So, so a lot of people then actually um, continued to recruit you. Exactly, one. exactly. Right. It wasn't it wasn't continued to recruit me. It was recruit you, me you at all. Start, yeah, but yeah. You already committed. Yeah, to I me. already committed, and nobody knew me in the first place, so it was no reason to really look my way. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But it was some teams in the region who just, you know, flat out just, I mean, disrespectful. After I, I tell you, I can tell you this. Tennessee came to the Evansville game and never came back. <laughs> they never came back. It was one of my worst games ever. So they never came back. So they dropped off after that game. So they they actually came. To, they came to that game because of me. Only bad game yeah. you had. Yeah, yeah. Real talk. Real talk. Only bad game you had. Everybody had a bad game, man. It just, it just, we just. Right, really, yeah. that, that's one of them rainy days, man. Nah. nah. It's, it's just a bad day. Bad game. Bad day, bro. We got beat twenty eight nothing, man. We got shut out in our own field. Twenty eight nothing, man. Never beat Ellsville in high school. All while I was there, never beat them. Right, that's another reason I was disappointed in um in Illinois for not recruiting me, man. They 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 recruited some guys with with um less athletic ability than myself. They was, they was good football players though. You know what I mean? I can't take nothing away from that, but. Like man, how look? How did these cats get off for? And I ain't get off for, but they yeah. they definitely was good. So shout out to those guys. I ain't gonna name them because I want them on the show, man. It's a couple of them. Yeah, man, it's a couple of them though. But yeah, you know, it's, it's all good, man. Yeah. Number of love coming from this way. All right, so recruit never. Yeah, you never did get to experience the recruiting process for real. You was uh, in a sense a late bloomer. Some of that. Uh, how much of that do you think was? Because of you and the system that you was in prior to Coach Sun getting the East Side, it was it was one hundred percent the system we was in, one hundred percent. The system that we was in was just not it, it, it just not it wasn't a productive system for a wide receiver. All right, so you, so what you're saying is the ability to to make plays and do things to be noticeable was always there. Oh, it was yeah, the potential was always there, and uh, you know we the the coaching wouldn't allow that. Okay. You know, the coaching wouldn't allow for the team, whether he knew how to do it or he didn't want to do it, it just didn't happen. All you right. know what I'm saying? So for 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 some of the people who had, you know, really, really good talents, uh, you know, um it, it it was a hard time. You know, I feel bad for some of those guys who were seniors and stuff like that, my junior year. Yeah. That class of two thousand. I feel bad for some of them football guys because a lot of them when I look back, has some uh, some real D one talent. Oh, Jones. Uh, it, it, well, I I can put it to you like this. I won't say Darwin Jones because I you know when I when I'm talking football, I'm talking football, man. Facts. Okay. Okay. You feel me? And it wasn't Darwin Jones. Darwin Jones, track guy. You know, athlete, track guy though. You understand? Mm-hmm. But Dontrell Harry. Dontrell for sure. Yeah, Dontrell Harry should should have been a starting running back the whole time. See what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? But that's just me on the outside. Exactly. Of the this is what I'm saying. You saying you saying what we saw? See, and, and I'm saying this because I'm placing myself at the scene of the crime. I'm supposed to be at East Side, basically. Yeah, yeah you, so you I'm do like, that. I'm like, dang, why they ain't got Don Trill running the ball? Right. So at that time, you could, at that time you could kind of justify why you ain't at East Side because it's like, they doing that, man. What they be doing with me? Yeah, you know, right, so it's kind of like you might be might be yeah, happy that you well, stayed that, away, that, though, that, at that, that point. A lot of people was getting the short end, though. Like, Don Trill played two, he played two games of running back that year, and both games he had over 200 yards. It was the last two games of the season. Two games? Yeah, he only played two. College in the Grand City. It was the only two nah. games. Nah. Ooh, no, 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 no. The only two games he no. played running back. No, false. He, and he didn't even false. start the college Bill, Bill, Bill game. He didn't even start the college game. Bill, Bill, matter of fact, it was. He came in. Julius, no. Most of them got hurt. So, so you said play. Play. He did not play just two games of running back. I'm telling you, he did. Because that's, you remember, it was. We played junior. We played maybe junior. maybe he's talking about two complete games as the feature back. Man, I'm, look look at this. Look what I'm telling you, man. He When he played... Two games. No, no, no. And running back? No, I'm listening. Listen, listen to what I'm, I'm telling you. It was... Uh, we played Belleville East at home. Collinsville. Belleville East at home. When the all got hurt, it was Collinsville. We played Belleville East at home. Okay. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm listening. And that was the game that he ran through them two... Collinsville. He put somebody in the hospital. He ran through two cats who tried to tackle him. He ran straight through him. Blue. No, I went 99 yards. This who was? No, we ain't talking about the same thing then. That's what I'm telling you. 
We ain't talking about the same thing. Uh, hey, so so what y'all arguing about is Don Trill making plays, dog. Man. Like, like they got two different good, scenarios. It's, it's hey, a, shout out to Don Trill. You better not ever pull me over. He's a state <laughs> trooper, man. Hey man, I appreciate what you're doing. Another you want you one of the good guys, yeah, man. Yeah, another hard working guy, man. Another hard working guy who just whatever he was gonna do in life, he was gonna be, you know, hard. successful. Hey, hey, and just because you're a state trooper, you still a living legend, so we're gonna get you on the show, Don Trill. You my boy, yeah. man. Yeah. All right, so they talking about two different scenarios where Don Trill is um, brutalizing and destroying Bellevue, the Bellevue defense. East. We play Bellevue East so, at home. So, so that's two teams out of the conference. He destroyed both of them. Oh boy, I'm talking about he was he was he was a two fifty back. Like you could put him, you could put him, and he's gonna run him up through the conference. Yeah, two fifty, two fifty. You know, and then Darwin Jones was not going to be that. Yeah, Darwin See, Jones was a hundred yard back in high school. Yeah, that's it. We're saying that that's pretty really simple. So, so the thing though, if, if Dontrell is the feature back, man, they get Darwin so much more shine. You know what I'm saying? It's, Darwin would have been a change of pace back. That's what I'm because, saying. Because here's the thing, though. To be quite honest, when we talking about this man, and you know, it's it's we trying to highlight an error as well. With me sitting here, we trying to highlight this error so you understand like the. The, the surroundings of me being in it. Yeah. All right. So we got what people don't understand is we had a coach who had people out of position. All right. Darwin should have never been a running back. Never Darwin been. was not a physical guy to play running back. He's definitely a slot receiver yeah. all day. Yeah. And that's, and that's offense. where he was productive at. Yes. That's we where before, he was productive at. But we don't have a passing offense. Right. Yeah. So – in order to get him touches, what you do? Put him in running back. Yeah. So it was a dilemma with all that stuff. You understand what I'm saying? Darwin Jones was a guy who, you know, had decent hands, yeah. you know, could run a little bit, and uh, he had a knack for making plays, you know, catching the ball a yeah. little bit. You know what I mean? So that's what he did. You know what I mean? And if anything, it, it should have been – if anything, the offense should have went like this. It should have went me. It should have went – honestly, it should have went me. It should have went Darwin at wide receiver – Kevin should have played quarterback. Okay. Kevin Anderson should have played quarterback. Sure, that's a true story. All right. Kevin Anderson should have played quarterback because Kevin Anderson was the best athlete on the, on the team. team. True story. All right. Hey, people don't get Kevin his his respect, man. Nah, I, I, I I I do it at every corner, man, because hey. I know I know who the real ones is. Now, I, hey, man, look, hey, 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 Kevin, you know I gotta get you on here. Shout out to the Grind Fitness. Um, that's one of the hardest working men in, 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 in the in the, the world, man. That's my that's my guy. Hustle um, man. I hired I, him this summer for him to cut my granddaddy <laughs> grass, man, and he held it down. Appreciate it. Oh yeah, hey, that's that's my boy, man. I mean, Kevin, we hold um. We hold a position together. We play a little nice together as well. Right, right. He was on the stack team. Tony Patterson, shout out. Tony said he's going to come get on the couch. Uh, those guys, man, they've they been good their whole life, man. And I, I, still, and, I still talk to Tony. And they, and they always work. You know what I'm saying? Tony baseball got too. You know what I'm saying? A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I want, we want to see both you guys on the couch. Um, like I said, man, like, subscribe. Ear Sports 24-7. It's all together. ILL Sports 24-7. Go to YouTube, like the page, subscribe, and leave a comment. Please leave a comment. That's going to help us out in the long run. Be a, be a helping hand. All right, so, boom, Don Trill. Yeah. You got Kevin. Yeah, uh, who, who, who else was in that class? Uh, so, let me let me, let me me take you through it. So, it should have been it should have been me and uh, Darwin definitely should have been, you know, wide receivers. And uh, the running back, the running back position – it should have been Dontrell starting, mm -hmm. and then you had Jared Wells. Uh -huh. Jared Wells should have been back. Uh, should have been behind uh, uh, Dontrell. Still, then, still a then, change of pace. And then, yeah, because you know, you know, Jared, you know, he and uh, he, the top three fastest people on in the in the, in East St. Louis, technically, because the school. I say East Side. I say yeah. East Side. Was the top three not in no particular order, but it was Mike Maggard, okay, baseball guy, uh -huh. Jared Wells, baseball guy, uh -huh. and it was me, baseball guy. The okay. three fastest dudes in in almost the the whole city was baseball guys, not yeah. track guys. Yeah. So Darwin actually wasn't even one of the fastest dudes around and all that stuff. Yeah. 
tell he was one of the fastest, but he couldn't get by Mike Maggard. Yeah. He couldn't get by Jared Wells. And if he couldn't get by them, he definitely couldn't get by uh, uh, Darwin. Couldn't get by me because I can beat on on every other day. I probably would beat Jared and Mike Mack every other day. We yeah. take turns beating each other. So understand what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but anyway, Jared Wells was another one. He was matter of fact, Jared Wells was the one who scored the only touchdown against Lincoln to beat him six to nothing in '97. Okay. All right. He the one turned up the sideline because we was on the visitor sideline. I was holding the down marker. He was on the visitor right, sideline. Right we we was on the visitor sideline. Lincoln was the home team that game. Yeah. Jared Will, you know Marcus uh, Marcus Lee. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, Marlon Tillman. Yeah. Was our running backs, and they went getting the job done. They put Pee Wee in. He turned up the sideline and took that big ball 60, 70 yards. Yeah, right by. Hey, hey, shout out to my boy Jared Wills. He was on my. Cardinals baseball team, and he's on my Clark Cardinals football team. I talked him into um, not playing for the Collinsville Raiders and playing yeah. for Clark. Yeah. And, uh, we went unscored on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, 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 Paul, I don't even worry about that, I man. Even I, 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 it wouldn't matter if you did. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Hey, unscored on two years in a row. Shout out to the whole Clark Cardinals around that time, seven, eight grade. No I man. Yeah, hey, yeah, unscored yeah. on city champs, man. In the yeah. city of champions, how let me. Yeah, but well, yeah, man. for sure, man. Jared Wills was the one who. Jared Wills was responsible for scoring the last touchdown in the East Side Lincoln game in the know, history. In, in history, now he 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 had it. He turned him. He turned that bit up. And what was the final score? Six, Six nothing. Hey, Mr. Boy. Field goal. Uh, two point conversion. Mr. Right. Field goal. What a guy. And I think Roy guy Montgomery guy. was probably was Roy the kicker. Yeah. Was Roy the kicker? No, 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 no. Was Roy the kicker? He probably was. Roy Montgomery was the kicker. Hey, hold up, hold up, man. I need to rewind because while you talking about the D1 athletes that was on that team, man, it's a cat that was on that team that, um, man, his whole time at Eastside, I don't think he got no love, man. And I know, I know for a fact because I know athletes. Kevin Edwards was a D one athlete, dog. Uh, okay, so he wasn't on that team. It was year before. Yeah, yeah. Kevin, uh, Kevin Edwards was on the uh, merger team. Okay, all right, cool. So Kevin Edwards was the one. You know, Roy Montgomery was out was our quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, T.J. Who was Leo? But here's the thing. My freshman year, though, Tyrone Do was our quarterback. Okay. Tyrone Dew was supposed to be, you know, the, the next savior to, you know, to keeping the tradition going and all that stuff, him and Marcus Lee. But those guys didn't have a good grip on what to do right outside of football. Okay. You know, so it didn't really work out like it's supposed to for those guys. But, you know, uh, Tyrone Dew had, like, Kentucky on his line real tough back then. Okay. But uh, I don't think it worked out like it's supposed to have worked out. But Marcus Lee, it was Marcus Lee, and it was – um. It was Marcus Lee and uh, what's it called? Tyrone Dew. Those are those are the, supposedly the guys. Yeah. You know, Marcus Lee was good in his own respect. You know what I mean? But it was so many. It was so many young guys that was around. Marlon Tillman was a, a heck of a a heck of a back. Marlon Tillman was like a uh, Darren Sproles. Okay. Marlon Tillman tip tap and drop his shoulder on you. Doing just doing this thing, man. Marlon Tillman. A lot of people forget get his name get lost in in the, in the talk of backs and all this stuff. Man, it's it's, it's and a, then Harry Dontrell's brother, Casio. Oh yeah, that's my boy, man. Casio. Casio was a was an athlete, but Kaz you know, hurt his arm or something though. He got a bus accident. Yeah, yeah, but. Hey man, it wasn't too much that was gonna stop Kaz from doing his thing neither, man. Kaz is another one. Like this is me knowing talent. Yeah. So back then when I'm looking at this stuff, it was a bunch of talent that was misplaced hey, and man. unused, man. That whole Harry L family had um, talented moment. football players, man. The whole family. So I, I gotta get a couple of those guys on the couch, man. You got Jr. You got Lil Emmett. You got Don Trail. That's three of them out of one family that, you know what I'm saying, deserve a, deserve a seat on the couch, man, just yeah, for man. Um, they work and what they did yeah. for, for football in the area. Yeah, that's, see, that's, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, you know, like when we talking about, you know, talking about, you know, East St. Louis football, you know, those are names worth mentioning as far as talent goes. 
but they ain't, they they ain't got the numbers and they ain't got you know. Yeah. But these are people that I respected. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and you know, if you take my word for anything, you know, then you probably understand that if he said it, then it probably was something behind it. Yeah. But you know, Dontrell, Casio, you know, all these people that I'm talking about, Jerry, you know, all these people that I'm talking about, man, were just you know real real good talents at the time, man, and you just. You just wished that they would have been where I was. Yeah, you, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? Uh, a lot of times, man, timing is everything when it comes to the opportunities yeah. that, that one is presented with. And a lot of times, guys, uh, for for whatever reason... I they, 100%, I'm 100% sure that I would not have ended up where I would have, where I ended up if it wasn't for Sunken. Yeah. Because he had the mind to take it to that level. Yeah. So be, before that, was um, was East St. Louis even attending things like that? Well, we attended the Mizzou camp because you know Mizzou was where Terry Hill went. Yeah. So that relationship was uh, it's already established. Existed. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was gonna happen. That was the only thing we went to. But that's the only thing we was gonna go to, and that wasn't even an every year thing necessarily. Okay. You know what I mean? He was only in, he was only coaching for four or five years. Man, I don't even know if it was that many. Four. You think Boy, it was that? I don't know. If it was that I'm telling you, man. Shan, Shan, was, I'm telling you. Shan. Listen to what I'm telling you. All right. Four years he coached because he coached me three years and he got there the year before I got there. And then, okay. the, then the year before that was actually my cousin, okay. EJ Jones. Jones. Yeah, yeah, Edmund. Yeah, that's my cousin. So he okay. was the coach for that one year. You All understand? Right. So yeah, so, uh, Terry Hill. He he uh, did four years and that was it. And you know the standard to win around East Saint is just so high. He just didn't pan out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so why why did Edmund Jones leave? Edmund, Edmund had like a eight and oh, nine and oh year one year. Y'all ain't sure, but you have to ask him that. I'm I'm not sure behind all yeah, that. Yeah, I I know I know Vic. I know Vic Vic Jones, man. Vic yeah. Jones, he he'll get up out of there in a in, in a drop of a dime, he'll leave the city yeah, or yeah. wherever he at. Wherever so, wherever. So yeah, it's yeah. all good. Shout out to Edmund Jones, man. He went on. Um, one of my mentors, I can call him and give him advice on just on um, how to go about this coaching stuff. Yeah, it's because, man. He been he been doing it a long time. It's because all us all us connect to us. I got Joneses on both sides of my family. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I got Jones on both sides of my family. So actually, the Jones, my dad, of course, is the is the Jones, but EJ is actually the Jones on my mama's side. Okay, on the Ellis side. I got so you. So all us up there and stuff like that is. He finds those cousins, all that's connected, all like that. So that's how they go. That's what's up, man. So I, you, high school, you have um, what three subpar years, or, or so how they call go? Them that. Ninety-seven, we striked after we went to Simeon, played Simeon. Then after we left Simeon, came back and we played Lincoln. Okay. And then we went on strike in ninety-seven. Okay. If you remember the strike in '97, so we went the almost the rest of the season, and we came back from the last game we played Granite City. Okay. So we played three games total in '97. High school experience of football was done, and shout out to Coach Stallings, man. He was the one who told me I needed to be a wide receiver, not a running back. Okay. You know, I played that one year little league for the little Comanches. Yeah. And uh, I was a running back and uh, turn around and then get to high school, try to play. Because that was in sixth grade. Yeah. I played that one year little yep. league. And then so I went, you know, seven, eight, and then tried to play again in ninth grade. Once I got to high school, my parents, my, my mom really didn't want me to play for real football. But yeah. I kept begging, I kept begging, I kept begging. And, you know, people like, you know, little Matt, Malcolm Henderson. Man, you was on a team full of guys who played football. Exactly. So, so they, they made it look always, nice. Yeah. And along with Dion making it look nice and Barry Sanders making it look nice and, and so many people just making it look nice, you know, even you know, man, just just it was it was just it was just a great a great, great feeling to just really see the game of football in, in, in the way that it was at the time because I had some great athletes, man. I got to see Barry Sanders tip-tap on guys. And yeah. You got to see Dion do what he did in this, this flamboyant way that he backed up. It's like, man, this dude is actually good. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> What's say like, all swag, all substance, too. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, all swag, all substance. A lot, a lot of people, they on uh, all swag, no substance. And um, Primetime, he's one of those guys who – who did them both and did them well. So, 
Yeah, oh, man. So it was real. It was it was it was a time that, that I definitely, you know, looked at it and uh, for myself, and I just I just had to be a part of it, man. I had to be a part of it. So when ninth grade, when I got to ninth grade, first thing I knew to do was go when I played football I was play running back. Yeah. Quite nasty. So I went to the running back line, and they was just like, "You too little." You know, I'm I'm skinny, so you know, they like you too, you too little, boy. You get get broke up these these guys and this, and of course, they never heard about me. Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't care if it it, it was base. They didn't hear about me. Period. It's high school. It's different. You know what I mean. They they looking at me and they know certain guys, so they know this guy was good for the night. So this guy was good for the little devils. This guy was see, good for see for for our area. What was conducive to our area was um. Junior high football. That so, too. So, so a lot of kids, uh, a lot of guys, they play little league, of course, and they they met so many people, and they would they would talk about you if you didn't play junior high ball. Like, yeah, are you still playing little league? You know what I'm saying? So facts, facts, and that's how I looked at it as well because it it, it just for me it was a uh, it was a way around playing big boy ball in a way. Yeah, playing yeah. little league ball. So, like, why would you play little league? You could play with Clark. Yeah, you know, shoot, even back then, King. Yep, King, Clark, Clark King, Lance down, Lance down, Rock, you know yeah, what I'm saying? It, it, like, it's going down. So with, yeah. with a guy like me transferring to Cahokia, that's um that's two years playing little league ball in St. Louis, not playing with these guys. Right, right. And then it's also I'm playing at Clark. I mean, yeah, I'm playing at Clark. And so they're not seeing me. So when I get to Cahokia, man, I'm on a ninth grade team. And I'm like, mm-hmm. man, I don't want to play with these little dudes. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and people looking at me like it's like right. it's strange. I'm like, man, I had teammates 15, 16 years yeah, old. That's right. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I know I, this is going to be too easy for me. Exactly. So that's, that was that was kind of the idea that was carried. It was, so obviously it was uh, across the board kind of feeling yeah. that people shared. Like, yeah, you no play doubt. little league ball, you was seventh grade. Because I think you could play little league ball way up to 14. So, yeah, to, to, to you, yeah, you, yeah, you, you could play. To 14 on little yeah. league because they went by, they didn't age. go by grade. They went by age. So, it was yeah. 14. 14, I don't know if 14 you can play or for, at 14, 14 they cut you yeah, off. Okay, so, yeah. So, it was like, yeah, 12, 12 years old, you in seventh grade. 12 years old. Mm-hmm. 13, you in eighth. Yep. 14, you in ninth. So it was some people who was actually playing in ninth grade. I, I knew about probably one or two people who was still playing little league. But I'm like, how? Because it, it didn't really register with me. But it was their age yeah. that allowed them to play. I could have played little league my ninth grade. Because some of them people didn't start. They they didn't be they was a fourteen until after the season got into it. They yeah. got into the season. Hey, because I, I remember um I remember Pokey Adam Taylor. Oh, he he used to make head. he used to make fun of little Mac. When we was at Clark, because um, I was in seventh grade, Mac was in eighth, Pokers in the ninth, and um, Mac when he went play, he, he played little league, he played for um, Raiders still, right. and he just, he was giving him a hard time about it all the time, yeah. and um, you know Mac Mac was a he was a dog, so was, yeah. he he definitely could have could have done it there at Clark with us, yeah. and uh, probably yeah. wish he would have. Because little league, man, it's too easy for him. I know it was. Yeah. One thing they were losing to was Kevin. L. I mean, Kevin Anderson now. Right, right. right I don't, I don't right. think them dudes ever lost, man. <laughs> yeah, they had a they, little league. Was cold, man. It, it was unfair. Yeah. It was unfair. So yeah, so we 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 went to the well. I went to the point where we was playing it up. While I was playing the East Side, that work. You know, when we was working out and stuff like that. Uh, in the uh, summer. And you know how they trying to hash it out, figure out what's gonna be what. Yeah. Right around that camp time and all that stuff. It's time to be out there, try out however you wanna look at it. And uh, you know, I hopped in the running back line, he's like, nah, you're too little, so I really didn't get no shot with that. You know what I mean? This is um this is actually when Arnold Neely first came over from uh, Al Toff yeah. too. So he was one of the running backs that they was kinda high up on because he was supposed to be this this guy from Al Toff and all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, it, it just, you know, for me, it was just one of the things where, you know, I didn't care. I just wanted to learn from the position that I knew and all that stuff. Yeah. So when they told me. You, that was, I familiar, play, you was familiar with yeah, it. So, so. Yeah, so when they told me, it's like, you know, go play DB, I'm thinking in my head, like, okay, I'm going to be Dion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to go be Dion. So I went over there to the line with Cole Stallings. Marion Stylers, man, Coach Stylers, man. I went over to the line with him with the DBs and stuff, and we doing drills. And he just, 
He started laughing then. Nah, he didn't start laughing. He just stopped. He just stopped the drill. Hey, 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 man! What you doing over here? What you doing over here? Exactly. Hey, what the fuck are you doing over here? <laughs> the hell, you doing over here? I'm, I'm like, I'm looking like this. <laughs> I'm like a fish out of water. Like, like what? He's like, nigga, if you don't get your ass, get your ass over there with the receivers. You catch too damn good. These niggas over here because they can't catch. <laughs> Get your ass over there and catch some fucking touchdowns, kid. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man. So that's how I actually started playing wide receiver. Yeah. And uh, Coach Stallings, uh, uh, you know, was kind of like the, that catalyst to, to just push me over there. And I played uh, played wide receiver and never looked back, man. Man, that's what's up, man. Shout out to Coach Stallings, yeah. man. Coach Stallings is on... Uh, a legend. He won what six six state titles, maybe with each side. Something like that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah enough man. enough to fit a hand. You know what I mean. Yeah, so for shout sure. out to him, man. It's a mastermind. You know what I mean, get you on the couch, big dog. Yeah. All yeah. right, um, uh, all right. So, I mean, you moving right along, man. You have a good senior season at each side. Yeah, man. Um, had a had a really had a really good senior season, but individually I did, but. We just lost too early in the playoffs. I don't know, first, second round, or something like that. Yeah. It's just too early, man. I just had more aspirations because I, I just wanted to do my part in keeping the tradition going in them state championships, man. And I just really felt like I didn't do enough winning because yeah. we had missed the playoffs in uh, 99. We didn't make the playoffs. Okay. Dontrell senior, senior year, we didn't make the playoffs. We went four and five. Mm-hmm. That was sad. Yeah. That was sad. That was, was, un, was, was unheard of at that time. Yeah, exactly. And and that's kind of probably what <laughs> and, and that wanted to strike you. You know what I'm saying? No. So so yeah. that's kind of what catapulted the decision to go ahead and let let Terry Hill go. You know what I mean? Because that was unacceptable. Yeah. Even in the midst of uh, uh, everything that was going on, we had a squad. Uh, hold up, hold because up, hold, the, hold up, hold up. Oh, yeah. Ninety nine is after the merger, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely shouldn't happen. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, it was a lot of people that felt the same. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they was right. You know, unfortunately, Terry I, Hill, to me, you know, wouldn't have got me to the next level like I thought I should be. You know, he he didn't have Florida State or Northern Dame in his mind for a person like me. Uh, he liked me and everything. And uh, he didn't know what to do with me, though. Yeah. And he actually I mean, told me. Pers- out of his mouth, he actually told me he... Was by the steps one one day in the gym, and he's like, "Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep on doing what you're doing. <laughs> keep, going. keep on doing what you're doing, and uh, we're gonna. Get, I'm gonna get you into a good college, like McKendry." And I looked at it, it was just me and him, and I just looked at him like, "Oh, I don't know what McKendry is," and I said, "Matter of fact, ain't that where so and so so and so?" I'm like. So in my head, I'm like, that ain't no good college. In my head, I'm like, that ain't no good college that I want to go to. I, I see, but um, back man, then they wouldn't even know D two school. Yeah, I see one of my um one of my previous guests, man. We was talking about expectations, man. A lot of times, your expectations and other people's expectations aren't the same. So you know what I mean? They they don't know what you're willing to do. They don't know the sacrifices. They they don't really know the potential. And that doesn't mean that they bad people. Nah. It just mean, hey, yeah, y'all yeah. not on the same page nah, and whatever going on. You know that, what I mean? That's exactly right because uh, Terry is a, is a good dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Terry is a good dude. But as far as his football mind, it just didn't do nothing for my development. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my – my uh, and, and catapulting me into another level – he just didn't have a whole lot to do with that. I can't give him credit for yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and that's you know fine, I mean? man. That's and, that's like um, a, a a great wide receiver going to the University of Nebraska when we was in high school. Yeah, like exactly. it, it, it just didn't make sense. It just you know what I'm saying? Sense, yeah. So, so he you know just, mean? None, none against him, but nah, hey. nothing against him, but you know, nothing yeah, against yeah. him at all. It's just that you know, it, it, it just where, yeah, where I, I want to be. Yeah, yeah. where I, and so I was I was actually, you know, ecstatic. To know that Sunkit was coming over, yeah, because I had knew about him from yeah. Uh, yeah, in, in uh, the state championship in '98 when they won state over there at Riverview. Yeah, you know that's when they were starting to put stuff on TV. Mm-hmm. So I actually got to see Prim- some of them. Really Prim- sports, yeah, yeah. You exactly. got to see, yeah, yeah. So I got to kind of see them visually and what the what the product looked like on the field. 
with that championship team who look demographically yeah. look like us. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? All black. You know, uh-huh. for the most part. They might have hey. one white dude on hey. the team. Really All black. Um, not a lot of guys, you know what I'm saying? Not a lot of guys, you know what I mean? Probably, you know, probably beat everybody, you know, 27 people on the team and all yeah. that stuff. They, yeah. they was like that. And they was playing the kind of football that I thought that East St. Louis should have been playing. Yeah. You know, because I'm used to seeing a product on the field that was much more productive under a Bob Shannon. See, see, you. That's who I wanted to play for. Yeah, me too. That's me too. who I wanted to play for. I wanted for. to play for Shannon. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, we, see, you you was following that tradition, man. And I, I don't know I don't know why. Maybe Edmund Jones and whoever else. Did your brother play um, sports at, at East High? No, my brother graduated from Lincoln, man. Really? Yeah. I never knew that. My I brother thought... graduated from Lincoln, man. So I, when I made I made a I made a conscious decision um about why I was going where I was going. And, and you know, I wasn't the person to necessarily like Follow my brother on everything type deal. You know what I'm saying? Like that, brother, and that's what it was, huh? Yeah, that would have would've been if I would have went to Lincoln and all that stuff. But, you know, in my mind, you know, my brother, you know, was actually he was he only two years older than me, but he three grades over me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So he you know, he he could have had a better athletic career, maybe if you'd have made a different decision on what school he went to as far as high school. Yeah. He probably could have had a better career as, as far as football. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, for me it was just I had to, I had to kind of uh, make a conscious decision of what I want to do for my future. I actually played baseball for Lincoln, yeah, varsity as an eighth grader out of A.M. Jackson. Ain't that something? Under B. Lou. Ain't that something? So think about that. Under B. Lou, you know how he is. Yeah. He took to me as much as to play me on varsity as an eighth grader out of A.M. Jackson. <laughs> because, like I said, I was used to playing up. How how did those guys receive you on that team? Oh man, they my my skills. I didn't start, but I played a ton. Yeah. So they was actually you know receptive because in in the at the end of the day, I wasn't starting over nobody, so I wasn't stepping on no toes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I was never the kind of person that felt like I was the shit. Yeah. And other than that, I was always the little humble Jones, you know what I mean? Little Jones, little Jones, humble guy and all that stuff. You know? So so it was it was pretty much welcoming and uh those guys kind of yeah, big, yeah, was man. big brothers. Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah. Something like that, man, you know what I mean? And uh you know, of course I, you know, of course I rolled my brother's coattail with his popularity and whatnot yeah. and all that stuff. You know, my brother was known to be a cool dude or whatever the case may be. So his brother is cool dude. They accepted me. It's just kind of you know, pushed it forward, but yeah. But I, I played, but then, you know, at one point, B. Lou was just, you know, he just pulled me to the side like, uh, today, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to need you to go practice with JV, man, because yeah. I can't keep having you in these varsity games. They're going to take the little couple games we won away from us, man, because okay. I ain't supposed to let you do that. You okay. know, he's like, but he said, trust me, little Jones, if I could. If I could, I would. You better than have these jokers, man. There's no Joker. doubt about it. He always talking about some jokers. Yeah, he's like, you better, you better than have these jokers, man. You, 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 you ain't even in high school, but come on over here next year, whatever. And uh, you know, and uh, you know, we'll we, we do it right. Yeah. So JV actually, you know, they don't care about none of that back then. They did anyway. That he could hide me, just put me in there. So I was, I started JV as an eighth grader. You yeah. know, so, you know, I was possibly on the team with some juniors. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, you know I mean? how I was back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's 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 where I was a lot of my time. I spent a lot of time at Lincoln. Yeah. But when it came down to choosing my high school, I was not going to Lincoln. What, so, what, what was the deciding factor for you? I was really looking for my career. Football? It was it was a business decision, Oh, man. both sports. Both sports. Okay. Because I played baseball. And football. And I was really going because of baseball. And like people like Robert Mosby, yeah. who actually graduated a year before. We all the same age, but they're a year over me in grade. Okay. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm, I'm born in 82. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we all like around that time and all that stuff. So I'm like, okay. He going there. So the Bulls basically was going to East Side. And yeah. some, of us, some of them went to Cahokia. Yeah. And I wasn't going to Cahokia. That that was dead. You know what I mean? That, that it just didn't even dawn on me to go to Cahokia. You know what I mean? Man, this is beyond me. What this but, dude talking about? Man. Hey, but 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 for real though, you know to be honest, given how we grew up, right? Given how we grew up, 
looked at Cahokia like a like a white school who wasn't going to really accept me yes. back then. Hey, man, truth be told, man, I didn't even know nothing about Cahokia until that summer that I was enrolling in Cahokia. Yeah. I was like, Cahokia, they got a school? I, I didn't even know. I, yeah, I never attended a game or anything. Like. Yeah, but I kept up with them because they played Lincoln in football. Yeah. So I, I kept up with them because my brother played football, you know, so I, I used to watch all them play. And I used to watch Lincoln, you know, battle with East Side and stuff like. I mean, Lincoln battle with uh, Koki. Koki and stuff like that. So I was, I used to watch, you know, people like, uh, you know, Byron. I watched play and uh, Red, the running back, the uh, uh, Red. I think he played maybe a little linebacker too, man. Yeah, he played May, running Mayhorn, back too. Mayhorn. Yeah, yeah, curly hair, red. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like him, like he was decent. You know what I mean? And uh, it was a couple players over there that was uh, worth watching and stuff. And those are some. Those are some good games, and, and usually, you know, Cahokia came off on top, usually, if I ain't mistaken. But it was some good games. It was football, though, at the end of the day. Yeah. So, I was watching that. I was watching that shit, but I was watching man, all that shit. I ain't gonna lie, man. I ain't know much about Cahokia, but, um, you know what I'm saying, I, I don't think I'd trade it for nothing. I had a good time over there, man. For sure. It, it, it definitely expanded um, my horizons. It, it got me ready for... The um, diversity of college, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, it was a lot of good things. Um, and, and it also it helped, you know what I'm saying, kind of crossbreed, you know. At, the, at that time, white people thought a lot of people from East St. Louis was dumb. Yeah, so, yeah. so, you know, I get to Cahokia. They don't know that I'm a gifted student from Clark. And um, right. they, they, they saying things like, hey, you know what I mean? It's all dirty, dumb people from East St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, huh? Yeah. Dirty, dumb? What you mean? Yeah, so. Like, when are we taking the test? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, you, you can ask Coach Roscoe Dow right now. You can, Whenever you run into him, you can ask him what happened. First test, I go slap it right on somebody's desk. Like, what you get? You know what I'm saying? My, right. uh, my, my A to their B. Like, man, don't, right. don't disrespect where I'm from. Right. So Don't judge what, me. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, like, uh, you were, at the end of the day, I tell people this, and this 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 comes up, man. And I actually just had a conversation where your name came up uh, um, between me and uh, Travis Dismukes. Okay. And uh, we was just talking and stuff like that. And I was just saying that you was. I said you was a. Uh, I was telling him that you was an East St. Louis guy. You wasn't a Cahokia guy. You was an East St. Louis guy who went to Cahokia. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I said, get the. You know, you gotta remember that. You know what I mean? So when I say you should, when I say stuff like. You know, Doc should have been over here. You know what I'm saying? It's because he was an East St. Louis guy. Yeah. And East St. Louis, if East St. Louis stay in East St. Louis, this thing is through the roof. Yeah. You know, no no years off. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? I, I, agree. I agree. You know what I mean? And that's what I was about. It was like, man, let's stay home. Let's stay home. Yeah. That's what it was all about for me. Right? So, you know, and if you knew, if it was about sports, you went to Lincoln if you want the hoop. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So if you was a hoop, if we, if you went to Lincoln, nobody's going to argue with that. But if you wanted to play uh, football, which, yeah. it really was, which it really was, you went to? Eastside. Eastside. Bar none. All right? You went to Eastside. And that's just where I thought everybody was going to make a conscious decision to do. But yeah. they didn't do that for whatever reason. You know, you got parents and life. Happens and you know what I mean. It just don't always work out that way, and I totally get it. You know what I mean? I totally get it. But you know when we having those conversations, like I was having with Trev, I got to remind like that's an East St. Louis dude. I said everybody who's from East St. Louis that play sports that don't end up in East St. Louis, I said that's what those towns need to beat us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A Belleville needs an East St. Louis kid to beat us. Yeah. To they eat, can't. They to can't even compete. Yeah, to even compete. You yeah. know what I mean? Not not just beat us to actually compete. They yeah. need East St. Louis kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's tactics and ways that they use to try to make that happen. You yeah. know what I mean? And uh, you know they ain't always ethical. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know. And uh, it turns out it turns out in a lot of situations where you know, of course, uh, we we you know go hold our own and all that stuff. And uh, we 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 just gotta continue to just win at the end of the day. Just win. Hey, what, what they say, winning winning cures all. Winning man. cures a lot of stuff, man. And uh, we've been we've been fortunate enough to just uh, be able to put a good product on the field. Well, you know, with these years since I've been there, this is my seventh season right here coaching. How many state championships you was a part of over there? Two, two, okay. Two. I got two state championships on each side, man. 
Yeah, so that's 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 definitely something that uh, I'm happy to have, man. But even still, man, it burns me that I didn't get one as a player. Ah, right, man, that's going to always um, burn me. Always. Especially man. when you know um, just just your time being there, you know talent-wise that the talent was there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and you know what I mean? It's, it's other factors that that we have to put in into place to realize why it didn't all manifest. And yeah. a lot of times, and I, I think Coach Sunkett does a great job of managing talent. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of talent at East Side right now. And yeah. he, he does a great job of managing talent. And everybody can't do that, man. Yeah, yeah, that's true, man. That's a very that's a very true statement, man. East St. Louis, man, is a cesspool of some talent, bro. It's like a it's like crazy, man. You know, I've 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 recently in recent years was able to really relay the idea of how important East St. Louis is to this region. Yeah. To my friends that's outside of East St. Louis. Yeah, I, because they're now they're now understanding like the things that they're doing in life, they starting to pop up East St. Louis. East St. Louis. And they across the country. East St. Louis, they, they so they always tap on me because I'm the common I'm the yeah. common denominator. And they always touch on me. I like I tried to tell you then. Yeah. They're like, but I ain't know it's like that. I like I tried to tell you then. You know what I mean? But it's it's an amazing, amazing city of talented folk who you know you heard a, you heard a, the saying that if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. Well, it's easy in my mind to make it in New York because the resources yeah. are out of this world in New York. Uh, you know, I never, I never heard them say that about New York, but I say that about here. Yeah. Say, like, man, you may all eat, man. Like a lot of times, um, obstacles and different challenges present itself, and I tell the person in the minute, man, I'm from East St. Louis. Yeah, oh, they're like, what? I'm like, man, I, oh, I, I can make it out of East St. Louis. I know, I, psh, there's nothing. Yeah, all day, man, and, and that's pretty much what it what it has been for real, bro. It's, we just. Resilient, resilient folk, man. You know the one who makes it out is gonna have more drive than 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 nine out of ten times gonna have more drive than the person that you ever seen for real, consistently. You know those people just you know seem to just wanna wanna make a difference in their life first, so they end up impacting other people's lives as a result of trying to change their life because they don't want to go back. They don't want to be a part of that beast no more. They don't want to be. They don't want to be the one who have to go back and explain why you didn't make it and mm-hmm. all this stuff about. It. So it's a mentality that goes behind people from people from here, man. And yeah. that's something that you know is you can't match. And that's something when I say you can't match it, that's that's something you know them schools up the hills or wherever, wherever they just can't match because this city, at the end of the day, it's the hood. Yes, sir. It's the hood. Yeah. And you can't tell me another hood around in this region that's like this hood when it's, you know, back then, 40,000 people all knowing each other that have a close relationship likely with each other. The murder rate is high. The poverty is high. The love is high. The desire is high. So you got all these beautiful and ugly things that's mixed up in the pot yeah. that make them, you know, such a such a, a, a such a, a a blessing to work with when they when they go touch on these colleges and universities and these jobs and stuff like that because we come from humble beginnings. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. All right, man. And um, just to just to piggyback off of the the type of talent that's in East St. Louis. I went to two universities, man. I um I started off in Mizzou, then I ended up in Indiana State, and in both places, people would ask me if I was from the South. I yeah. like, nah. Why you say that, man? Oh, y'all, y'all be balling and y'all talk a certain way. I'm like, nah, man. I'm from East St. Louis. Oh, yeah. you from St. Louis? Nah, wow. East, East St. Louis. 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 Yeah, Got across the bridge. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? It's a um. It's, a, it, it's an honor to have you on the show, you know what I'm saying, knowing that you're a young um, young coach who has some state championships under your belt as an assistant. Um, I think you do your, you handle your position and your role well. Who's the, who's the um, top three most talented players that you've had the pleasure of coaching? Uh, top three talented. Uh, 
How many years you been coaching again? It's my seventh season. Seven seasons. Okay, seven seasons. Uh, kind of do some name dropping, man. Let us know who. Uh, I like to go by position. I like to do that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, quarterback Tyler Macon. Quarterback Tyler Macon for sure. He's a he's a he's a quarterback. Yeah. You know, so uh, East St. Louis really hasn't had like a guy who was uh, really uh, quarterback. Quarterback like that. And he's a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? He's just uh, if he could if you could stretch him out about two more inches. You know what I mean? Oh, sorry, yeah, we'll say you know, everything it, else is on the yeah. Everything else is, is is beautiful about the kid. But it's, if you can stretch him out two more inches, it, it probably change the dynamics of uh possibly where he's going to school. Yeah, all right, but you know, but he's at a D one. He's at a major D one school, the University of North, I mean University of Missouri. He's going to be at yeah. there. He's going to give a good shot at competing for the starting position, and uh, he's I think I believe he's going to be a productive college quarterback. Uh, shout out to Tyler Megan. Uh, Chase Daniel was your size, my brother. I, uh, Drew Brees, your size, my brother. So be encouraged. Do your thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He ain't look, gonna, look he, the swag. Yeah, there you go right here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He going to slang it around, man. He makes every throw, man. He makes every throw, and he's uh, he's very confident on where he can fit the ball into. And that's that's a that's a beautiful thing. His His timing has picked up. You know, it's, it's gotten better over the years. He's getting, he's just getting better and better, man. So it's like I'm encouraged to see what Mizzou is going to bring out of him even more. So I'm encouraged about that. Okay. But uh, Tyler, quarterback. Quarterback. Okay. Running running back, uh, Didi, Damian Nash. Okay. Uh, Damian Nash. You ain't, you ain't coach him, but you play with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was well, different. I played with him too. Uh, well, oh yeah, we go for who I coach. I'm sorry, Tyler Macon. <laughs> He has some good holes around the east side, dog. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler Macon, uh, who, I, who I coach, Tyler Macon. Running back, I'll go with uh, the Jarrell kid was pretty, pretty, pretty good talent. He was his career got his high school career got cut short with that knee injury his senior year. Man, what but, about? Uh, he, he was that starting running what back. A, what about Greg? Who Taylor? Uh, he, I didn't coach him though. Oh dang, you went there? Uh uh-uh. uh. Dang. Uh, he, he left with uh Dan Williams, I think. Greg didn't? was an animal. Nah, man. I think Greg was out the damn. No, him and him, him, him and Nate was together. They out the damn. No, no, no. Nate Greg, was Greg, was, Greg was Greg was uh Greg was before Nate. Nate, Nate, was, Nate, Nate, Nate was Nate was a senior when not my first year. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Greg went there. Was thirteen. Fourteen. Fourteen. My first so season. Greg was thirteen. That's okay. what I'm saying. Him and Dan came out the same time, I think. If I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I didn't I didn't get the coach in so man, I think y'all are tripping, man. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, about he he went to Mizzou. Went to Mizzou, yeah. yeah. Okay. Ended, I, ended I, up uh did he go to Carmendale after that? I think he went somewhere. No, that was Russell went to Carmendale. Uh nah, he no. did go to he went over there yeah, with, uh, he went there too. What's line back in Watson. Watson. She went over there with Cairo. They the hell Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah, man, we, I'm getting old. Uh, I can't believe them boys said old. But yeah, All right, so Jarrell, yeah, probably probably Jarrell. Uh, uh, but I have to if I if I do two running backs, I have to say Jarrell and then uh, Spoon. My little okay. cousin, shout out to my cousin Spoon, man. All right, yeah. so so yeah. now I this one, this one is gonna show. get serious at when you get to the receivers. Oh, Jeff Thomas, he's Jeff Thomas. He's he's one. He, yeah, yeah, by far. So it's easy to pick the two receivers then, or is it hard? I, I pick three receivers. Okay, we we'll pick three. I pick three receivers. Three receivers would be Jeff. It'd be this. Uh, it'd be Jeff. It'd be uh, uh, this Keontae Lewis kid that's that leaving. Nice. And then uh, love it. Love it. Okay. The boys nice. Two of them boys in the same class, huh? If I had to, if I had to add a fourth receiver, if I had to add a fourth receiver, man, I don't know, man, but uh, Big Eric. That went to I State. That came out seventeen. Uh, he no, he graduated in the eighteen, I believe. Okay. But his season was seventeen. With Christian mm-hmm. Perez, Eric Rogers wore number eight. Yeah. Man, that big Eric. that big motherfucker was smooth, man. Yeah. That big motherfucker was smooth, and he works, man. Was he always there at East High? Do you nah, know? nah. He had uh he he uh, moved over uh from from the St. Louis side. Okay. He moved over. Him and his family that came over there with us. Uh, his, uh, I don't know. He might have came like 
right after like maybe like his season or something like All that. Right. Cause they had a short season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah wherever he came from, they had a short season, man. So he he after that he came over before sometime in the end of the first semester or something like that, I think. All right. Pop polished lineman. Oh man. Uh, uh, offensive side. Spraggins. <laughs> uh Spraggins. Uh I kind of, I kind of have to get it. I have, I kind of have to go with uh, Big T. He went both ways, though. You know, he ended up being defense in college, Terry Beckman. Okay. But I kind of have to put him on both sides, though. So, but it was uh, Terry, Trey Ball. Terry, Terry, Terry might be, he might be uh, a different ball player if he stay on that offensive side, though. True. Just, just me, me okay. knowing the type of uh, footwork and um, just. Finesse that you can utilize on the offensive side, man. Yeah, the, his his upside his upside was uh his up it was his upside was you know he had an upside to him, man. <coughs> he had an upside to him, and uh, you know he he just he was he was a good he was a good he was a good athlete, just a flat out athlete. Yeah, that big, you know. Yeah. The kid the kid right now is you know six five three ten. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's a he's a big guy, playing playing D tackle, mm-hmm. six four six five right now easy three ten man. He with my bird. So when he when he went when he went hard, his hard was unstoppable. Yeah, you know what I mean. And uh, I think uh, a lot of uh, I think what I heard when it hit the wire a lot of a lot of what I was hearing on the wire about him because you know I still got people in places so they talk. They want to see him work harder. Yes, yeah, okay. So, I hope that the Bears, you know, he got new life. They're going to give him this opportunity that he taking a run with it, though, for sure. I mean, hey, you know, you got you to take advantage of the opportunities, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? Everybody don't get these opportunities. So, yeah. I, I hope he take advantage of them, man. You know what I'm saying? Whatever doubters that he have, hope he can prove them wrong and do what he do. Yeah, so I, I, I stop. I stop right there with the linemen, for real, because they stand out. Yeah. But Trey Ball was somebody as an offensive lineman and who I actually said who has the longest career in the NFL okay. coming up. I've said that when he went into college. Trey okay. Ball, Trey Ball. Trey Ball got this that like I I know pro I know that level, you know what I mean? And I know what they be looking for. And I was just hoping that he picked up the skill of, of being, you know, a knee bender. Yeah. As we say. Yeah. Is he a knee bender and he eventually got that at Mizzou? I'm like, oh, he gonna be all right. Like, and he guy. became all SEC his junior year, and then all SEC his senior year, I believe. So he was a person that I really, I really said, yeah, this dude is the dude that's gonna stay in the lead for a minute because they don't get rid of linemen like that. First of all, oh yeah. So he he's right where he needs to be with Jacksonville to make it. He's actually, you know, uh, I just spoke with him probably you know a week or so ago. You know what I mean? We still keep in contact too. That's that's. That's 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 a good good guy, man. You know what I mean? That's like, he's a good man. guy. It's good you keeping tabs on these uh, young athletes, these young black men. And yeah, they know I pop up on them anywhere. Yeah. You know me, you know the plane ticket away ain't none enough for me to hop, pop up on them and you know just be like, you know, what's good, man? I'm here. Let me see you be in your element. You know what I mean? And just show me what you learned. Yeah. You know, I, I'm I'm not your coach anymore. Yeah. yeah, you call me coach, but I'm not your coach anymore, man. I'm 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 here as a person that that you know that I ain't never that far. Yeah, that's it at this yeah, point. Hey, you know, so good. I ain't gonna tell you what to do with your game and all that stuff. But I'm we can talk the for, game if you want to. I'm just here for support. That's you know it, man. Saying? That's it, man. I'm 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 gonna remain a fan of you. That's all, man. You know yeah. what I mean? At this point, you ain't gotta give me nothing. You De- know? Defensive backs. Defensive back, if I had to grab my two safeties, my two safeties would be Antonio Johnson at free and then uh, Stanley Green at strong. Big stands. Stanley Smack, Green. Smacking stuff. Play playmaker, yeah. baby. Stanley Green. Uh, and then corner, I kind of have to go two ways too, man, uh, with, with Jeff. Yeah? Jeff was a... Uh, right, people, don't, people, they don't even remember that he was playing a lot of corner, man. Oh, yeah, he was a he was a corner all through the playoffs. Yeah, his uh state the state year. He yeah, was all through the playoffs. He was you know what I mean. I, I said I even seen him hop in at some DB 
early in the year in that Trinity game, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But you know, he he didn't practice. He didn't practice. We, we just you know, practice. We made sure he knew what to do. He was very quick at picking up stuff. Yeah. So you know, he uh was a person to just be able to just go out there and do it. Yeah. And uh, you know, it was a fine line between doing too much with him. And uh, not doing not doing enough with him it was a fine line between that. So you know, but he was he was ahead of his times, man. So he just stood out wherever he's gonna be at, man. Do you think he got a realistic shot at uh, at this NFL? Uh, he got he got some stuff that's following him, man. That that you know he has to work to clean up uh, from things that happened, you know, in college and all that stuff. So you know, does he have a real shot? Well. His shot got let go with, with, with the Patriots. I don't know what's going on with him now necessarily, but uh, I don't think his uh, life in football is over with per se. Yeah, I don't think it's over with. Uh, so I, I'm I'm looking forward to see what else uh, what else he what else he can kind of get going for himself on that level. I am. So uh, I'm, I'm hopeful, you know. So um, just me, me. corner corner. I think I guess I need another corner, huh? Yeah. That's, that's kind of tough. That second one kind of tough. That second one kind of tough, though, man. So, you know, nobody just stick out? Not really, but uh, this this Dylan kid wouldn't have bad, though. Yeah. Yeah, this so Dylan kid. Cousin, Dylan yeah, Dylan wouldn't have bad, though. He, he's a name that I toss around with that with that, with that other one. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure right now. I have, to, I have to get back on that one, but, you know, yeah. That's all but good. Line, linebacker, Jimmy Jam. That's my boy. James Knight, Jimmy Jam. That's my boy. Shout out to the Knights, period, man. Jimmy Jam, man. Jimmy Jam, Kenny Knight. You know what I'm saying? Those are some of my boys, man. I mean, I, I, co- I coached Kenny. He ended up coming to the side. I think you might not have been there yet. But um, Jimmy Jam, those, those couple of my boys. Jimmy man. Jam, Jimmy Jam was a problem, man. Jimmy Jam was a linebacker, bro. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with his size and everything, it don't allow him to be a D1 linebacker. Yeah. So they got to they gotta play with him at the safety, nickel, hybrid kind of uh, yeah. position. They got to play with him to get him on the field because he's such a playmaker yeah. at Illinois. So, you know, that's why he was in, even put at nickel yeah. for Illinois. Play some, playing some nickel and stuff, man. But Jimmy Jam is he as a linebacker boy, hands down, hands down. He's to me, to be quite honest, man. He's the he's the best one. He's the best linebacker that since I was there. Yeah. yeah. And seeing others that came after me after us, Paul. He could have played with any era. And all Jimmy Jam is a, a, a problem, man. Jimmy Jam will play with his shoulder broke and still knock you out. I'm talking about he he you know back when it was uh, back when it was uh, somebody like uh, Pokey. He was a, Pokey was the first play. Pokey used to lay wood. Yes, yeah. he did. He was the first person I knew to break a face mask, <laughs> and he did that a couple times, man. He oh. laid he laid that big that big. The head of his, man, he lay that head down, man, and hit you and bend that face mask in. You know you got hit by Pokey. Yeah. So, you know, he was a hitter. Pokey was a hitter. I'm talking about Jimmy Jam can hit with the best of them, bro, when I say this now. And I done been around some hitters. Yeah. Jimmy Jam. Okay. Jimmy Jam, man. And, and go sideline to sideline. Yeah. It's just, it's just he's going to make the play on third and one. What's he? that? He gonna, he gonna produce. He's gonna produce, man. So Jimmy Jam, as far as linebackers, man, D tackle, uh, what you call was unstoppable. Big T was unstoppable when he went. Okay. And, and D tackle, yeah, he he really was unstoppable. Uh, I mean, even somebody like State Street, yeah, Harvey, mm-hmm. yeah, Harvey, Harvey, Harvey was a, he was a problem. He was a uh, M, he was a tweener. Yeah. You know, he was a guy who was about the size of a college linebacker, possibly, but played deep tackle. So he was he was somebody that we experimented with and what to do with him. Yeah. And uh, deep tackle was one of the positions. 
and that boy used to give people fits. So I, on a high school level, him on a high school level, you know. Now them boys on the same team. Yeah. State Street, Jimmy Jam. Hey, look, um, Jimmy Jam, check this. Oh, no, State Street, check this out. You know my wife, man. Um, she going to Little League football practice. It's like a scrimmage or something out there. And State Street out there playing. Like, I knew State Street since he was a little dude. But I didn't know they called him State Street at this time. Yeah, she yeah. come home and she just raving about, hey, they got a kid named State Street out there in Centerville. Yeah. He laying cats. So I'm like, State Street? Yeah. Why they call this man State Street in Centerville? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, when I find out who he was, I'm like, boy, they call you State Street? Yeah. He's like, yeah. I said, boy, you just don't know. Boy, I've been hearing your name for three weeks in my house. Like I said, my wife don't know nothing about football yet, for real. Right, and right, she right. like, State Street knocking cats out. I yeah. say, I say, boy, that's just hilarious. And, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Hopefully, um, before that window closes for him, hopefully he's doing something with his ability, man. Yeah, yeah. He went off to JUCO and everything, and I know he was... uh. Playing for uh, Iowa Western. Yeah. Yeah, something like that, yeah. I, 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 I fellas, be encouraged, man. If this stuff was easy, everybody would do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes you got to you gotta have, have a little perseverance and yeah. do your thing, man. Uh, we, we, we actually closed down on the end of the show. Uh, Kendrick, you know what I mean? I have to ask you this because I ask everybody this. Who's the best um, wide receiver at Eastside in Eastside history? Homer Bush. Homer Bush, AG. Also a baseball player. Homer Bush is the. Okay, Homer Bush is my favorite all time athlete at Eastside. Yeah. Probably because he was baseball and football, but he was a guy you put him wherever you put him. Gonna produce. Homer Bush, man, that dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Homer Bush was Jeff Thomas before Jeff Thomas, my man. Yeah. Homer Bush was the guy I used to watch, you know, uh, film before my games to 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 see how I was gonna emulate my game after Homer Bush, man. Yeah. Homer Bush was getting Homer Bush was special, bro. I don't know if you ever caught any games, seen any film on or something like that, but I Homer one day, one day I was messing around in one of them uh, storage rooms at East Side and all this stuff, and I found a VHS that had the year on it or something like that. I think it said, like, 91 or something like yeah. that. So you had to pop it in. Well, I had to. I had to. So I got to see Chris Moe, and I, then I now, got Now, see, me being a running back, you know, that's a name that I heard. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? My brother played running back at Lincoln. Yeah. And um, Chris Moore at East Side. So, you know, of course, me being a little brother, yeah. I got to make fun of my brother. Like, hey, man, you think you cold, but you're not Chris Moe? <laughs> he used to get mad at me. Like, you cold, but you ain't Chris Moe. Hey, man. my man, Homer Bush. Homer yeah, Bush was Homer Bush was was a, was a problem, man. He's a, he was he was that deal. He was that guy that every every third time he touched the ball, he was scoring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every every three touches, he was scoring. You need those guys, man. Oh, he was special, bro. You know what I'm saying? My, my, my producer, man, he baseball guy. He probably ain't know nothing about Homer Bush and, and knowing that he's from this area, man. So Homer Bush you know is a World saying? Series. Uh, we got a World yeah, Series two. with two World Series with the with the with the Yankees. Yeah. Got to make sure. Got to make sure my guy do his research and make sure he's knowing knowing this um uh, this area of the six one great. You know what I'm that's, saying? That's that's my all time favorite East St. Louis athlete, man. That dude was 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 nice, man. Like my, my Robbie session. Yeah, nah, nah, cause you know, cause with that, with with that ball, as far as he, huh, Rodney Sessions was never the football player this guy was. Yeah, he was as athletic or whatnot, but nobody the fo- was ever the track athlete Rodney is. This, oh yeah, he's that for sure. <laughs> but this guy wanted that baseball and football. You know, you know, you really the test of athletes is putting that ball in your hand. You know what I'm saying? Anybody get out there and run track? No, and that's run. Not true. Hey, hey, hey. Everybody not true. can't get out there and run the <laughs> hurdles, though. Everybody can't run track. Nah, I mean, but you hear what I'm saying, man? You could put you could put a baseball athlete like a Mike Maggard, on like a Jared Wills, you can put them on and the put track. them on the track, and they're gonna be y'all best track athletes not on the track. Woo-hoo. People even run. 
work track. What? Did run you track. crazy. I was on the track team. Pee-wee, 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 Pee-wee did. Pee-wee did run track. track. He did. Pee-wee ran track, man, because they tried to get all three of us to play. Mike I mean, did. Mike ran Mike and Pee-wee did, too. He play. just did. Pee-wee just didn't want to keep running track, but Pee-wee ran track, man. Jerry I, I, ran I track. definitely remember Pee-wee running. He, he didn't want to run track because it, it interfered with baseball. He, was a base, he, he didn't want that to happen because you remember Mike had problems with his hips and stuff. Damn, his hips. His hamstrings are bad. Because his hips. When your hips are messed up, your, your hamstring is off. I was there when Mike broke Carpenter and into uh, the 60 record. He was moving. And people don't realize that Mike couldn't beat me. Uh, he couldn't really beat me like that. Yeah. What saying? It was, a, it was a battle. Oh, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when when I used to tell people, like, y'all ain't that fast, they used to thought because I ain't run track that I couldn't speak like that. Yeah, and I was, I used to tell them like, man, the three fast dudes on in in the school play baseball. Yeah, they coach coach D. All of them they came out there looking for us because they knew. Yeah, you know what I mean. At the end of the day, they could use us, and once they got Mike Maggard, that really hurt him on the baseball tip because he had problems with his hips and all his hamstrings and all that stuff. Yeah, and Mike Mike was a baseballer, bro. That he should have never touched track. The seasons, the seasons cross. Hey, he's yeah. trying, to do, he's trying to do too much, yeah. so he should have never touched it, in my opinion, because he's, right, he's so, one of the great people. So, so speaking on that, man, um, coming from an era where we played two and three sports, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times these days, um, individuals are playing. They specialize in one sport. How how do you feel about about that? Well. How I feel is uh, uh, most of the time when we played two sports back then, we could actually play two sports, saying that we was actually productive at it. Okay. Uh, this this day and age, man, uh, you know, the, the the skill level has to be at a certain point for you to be productive at your at your sport, whatever it is. So mm-hmm. most of the time, your skills lack yeah. if you're just not that dude, and your skills lack if you're not. Concentrating on that one sport because you have so many people concentrating on one sport that their skill set is eons and 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 a long way away from you know the the person who's doing two sports. Yeah. So it it fall is a fall off. So you know what I'm saying. So we you know I know like we came from an era where you know you could actually just like we had some people who just like. Was doing it, you know what I mean? Just like really, really doing it. So it was like a way of life. But then you know, with all the training that's going on now, with all these, you know, what's what they call it, elite over there and next levels and yeah. all these different, you know, facilities and stuff you can go to and work on this and work on that and work on position skills and all that stuff. You just when you show up at training camp and you haven't been there the rest of the year. You far behind. Yeah. So you're not as competitive. So if you're a guy, the pressure to be that guy now is way higher. So you have to be somebody productive in both things to a great degree in order for it to make sense. You know what I mean? Because if college, and and not just college, I say that going to school for free, is the ultimate goal for ninety five percent of these kids, right? So if your goal is to go to college for free, then you better take a certain amount of uh, investment into yourself seriously and just realize that, like, if I'm gonna compete with so and so over there, and not even just over there, on the other side of the river, yeah. So I can compete for those uh, jobs at Ohio State, you know, Florida's. Florida States, Alabama's. If I want to compete for that, I can't be anything less than that. And those guys, they be going all year round, be doing this, be doing that. Yeah. So the pressure to play one sport is there. It's, it's real. You know what I'm saying? And I understand it, but, you know, I'm not against it. Coach Sunkett, you know, when I played baseball, he's like, man, you know, he's kind of like, man, niggas don't play baseball. Kind of deal like niggas ain't good at baseball. Until he saw me play, he's like, no, nah, you keep on doing that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I actually was, you know, my, my thing was I just wanted to be a professional athlete. Okay. And I didn't care how I got that between baseball and football. So at the end of the day, I actually had baseball scholarships too. Yeah. I just turned my baseball scholarships down to play football because 
when you know I had like uh, Missouri Missouri State off of me. What's That's where Dante name? Brinkley went. Yeah, Missouri State, uh, Semo, and Southwest yeah. Missouri. I believe they were, those are the three schools that definitely offered me baseball scholarship. I talked to Dante too. Dante said he want to get on the couch, man. Listen, hey, people don't know Dante from the six one great. Legend, man. Did his thing. You know yeah, what legend, man. man. Like, so, it was attractive for me to go to Mo, uh, to go to Mo State. Yeah. Because Dante was there. And I, in my head, I'm thinking, like, if Dante, that good ball is there. Yeah. Good, good baseball is there. Yeah. I think, actually, around the time he's in there, they might have won, like, a national talent. They, 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 still, they, still, they still a good baseball program. It's um, one of the best baseball players in this area. He at Granite City, man. Okay. Cat named Mason Roar. Right. Okay. He, oh. um... He's going to Missouri. Um, shout State. out, shout out to him, man. That's yeah. that's, that's that's almost a lost art. Baseball, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I, that's what I tell people about basketball. I like, I like actually basketball was my favorite, but I said, man, I want to go to Ellisville. Yeah. You know what I'm right, saying? Or right. Carbondale. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That they weren't big enough for me coming out of high school. So. Yeah, I, want, I wanted to play in front of 100,000 people against Michigan, Ohio you know what State. I'm I wanted to play against Penn State and uh, Dev Valley. I wanted to play, you know, all these big town schools in front of 100,000 people and then in front of millions more on ESPN every day. And baseball wasn't doing that. So, and it was quicker to go pro in football, for real, than it was in baseball in my eyes, if I didn't get drafted. Yeah. Which, like, Bobby Mosby got drafted out of high school. Yeah. Or whatnot. Chaz, uh, Chaz Macklin, I think, as well. Chaz. Got, uh, yeah, Chaz Macklin got drafted out of high school, I believe, to the White Sox, I think. Yeah. You know, White Sox organization or whatever. So, you know, for me, I was looking at it like, I could do four years and do my four years in college, and then after that, go pro. Yeah. So I'm like, football is it. I'm going I'm to do football when I had to make my decision. That was another business decision, man. Hey, man. I, I always been a businessman his whole life, man. Yeah. We want to thank um, my boy Kendrick Jones, prime time, for coming on the show. This is Sports 24-7. Make sure you go to YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment. Leave a comment, man. Let me know something. Uh, this is my co-host, Coach Poe with Trenches Reloaded. He getting the line and together all across the nation, man. Appreciate you, man. Two thousand one Big Ten champs. Hey, yeah, he got he got a ring for that. You know what I'm saying? Two thousand six CFL Great Cup champion. You know what I mean? Yeah. I done something. Hey, you know he did mean? all that. Mizzou, we three and zero versus him. Holla at me. It's all good. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. <laughs> uh, no doubt, no doubt, man. Appreciate you, dude. Yeah, it's always right on, a pleasure. Man. Man. Glad you come through, man. Yeah. We got the killers over here. Yeah! We got the killers over here. Yeah!